Thank yeah, you. yeah. I just decided to change the title a little bit to make it more uh, friendly to the people who don't do as much uh, ODEs. Okay, so new title is solving ODEs with uh, benchmarks in Julia. Right. So we're trying to improve a classical um, scientific computing use case. Right. So we'll talk about it with a classical uh, ODE test case. Um, so we're going to be concerned with the motion of the Pleiades star constellations. Um, people have been concerned about these stars for quite some time. Um, the Greeks thought that they were seven sisters that danced around. Um, we now know, we're a little more sophisticated, we know that we can model these as seven particles, right, um, which um, are moving around because of gravitational forces. Right? So Newton's second law is going to give us how the position and velocity changes uh, depending on the location of these particles. Okay, it's a messy formula. For all of you guys who are glad that high school physics is behind you, we can just um, think about this function, right? So the question that we're concerned with is, um, given this function, right, which is going to determine the position and uh, velocity and, uh, um, or how they change, and some initial conditions at some time t0, um, where are these stars going to be at some time t1 afterwards? What velocity will they be taking? Okay, um, we're going to even, you know, simplify this even further by just being concerned with this vector. So we can ask it, how is this vector changing and where is it going to be? Okay, so this is what's called an initial value problem. It's a simple E, it comes up a lot in engineering applications. And you can solve it with this package, ode.jl, that I'm hoping to um, further develop this summer. Okay, um, so we're gonna need the derivative, we're gonna need our function, our initial values, the time range that we're concerned with, and some other arguments which are going to change how accurate of a solution we're hoping for. And the user will have to decide what solver to use. ODE.XX, or ODEXX, that's not a solver, it's just a placeholder. So if that doesn't work, don't worry, it's, it's not broken. Um, we're always trying to grow the package more. So one of the things that I'm doing this summer is uh, implementing some new solvers. Here is uh, a new solver, ODE113, uh, native Julia code. So we're not wrapping anything from you know, Fortran or something like that. This is written in Julia. Okay, um, so ODE solvers are really integrators, right? Because if we have the derivative, we can go back to high school calculus and realize that we can get our function, right? And how it's going to change in time if we can integrate the derivative. So this Adam Bashforth molten method, it uses polynomial interpolation in order to do this, right? So we're going to interpolate the last couple of points um, with a polynomial. So this solver, what's cool about it is that it can do this intelligently. Right, so it can use a variable order, so we can change what you know degree of polynomial we're interpolating with, um, and how many previous points we're going to use. We can also change the step size. So where the derivative is kind of you know it's changing rapidly, we're going to step over those regions slower, um, which is going to give us a more accurate reading of this derivative. Okay, what's cool about this? Um, solver is that it uses a minimal amount of function evaluations, right? So if your derivative is very you know, messy, it's very hairy, um, you probably want to use this solver because compared to some of the other solvers currently in ODE.JL, um, it requires much, a, a lot fewer uh, function evaluations. Great. Okay, so let's go back to the Pleiades. Let's solve it, right? So I gave it some initial conditions and let's see how this evolves. Um, so we have our seven sisters dancing around here. And we can see this computation is pretty quick, right? So I just have this here, 0.3 seconds. Um, and it, this is a medium error, right? Because if you remember back to, you know, how, you know the other uh, arguments, we're looking for a medium error. Now let's just look at the blue, blue star. Now we're gonna say a lower error, you know, a lower error with a different solver. Medium error from before, and a higher error. Okay, well obviously the higher error there's some difference, but how about the other ones? I mean, is there a difference at all? Well, yeah, we can. We see there is a difference, right? But how is a user going to tell, right? If I want to know, what am I going to do? Um, we're going to need a way to benchmark these solvers. So we have a benchmarking scheme. We're going to use a test case. 
we're going to predetermine the reference solution, either analytically or we're, or we're going to solve it very precisely for like, a, you know, do, it'll take a while, but we just use it as a ruler, and then we'll test performance. And you can do this with this new test suite, um, IP, IVP test suite that we're developing. Right now, uh, created by Mauro, my uh, mentor, the code's there. And, um, so this is one printout, right? Um, you can see that these two different solvers are going to have a, you know, a speed accuracy trade-off. Um, so if you want something very quick, because you're rendering or some, something like that, ODE45. If you want something that's more precise, ODE113. So these are the things you can do with this, now, this new package. And I want to thank all of the people up here, my mentors and Google, uh, Google Summer of Code, Julia, the whole ecosystem. Thanks for listening.